everybody, get ready. We are partying on the patio this morning. Toronto Caribbean Carnival getting ready for another round of amazing wee events this weekend with the Calypso Monarch competition along with the Carnival Junior Parade and the rescheduled Junior King and Queen Showcase. So let's welcome back to our show this morning, Mishka Crichton, CEO of Festival Management Committee. And we've also got King Cosmos, the Trinidadian Calypsonian, and also Hayden Joseph, who is the band leader uh, for the uh, Lavway Mass, and Letitia, who is dressed so beautifully this morning. Uh, you got to get ready so early, so yes. I, I feel you. Okay, good morning, everyone. So let's start with you, Mishka, because the, the Junior Parade, uh, that's happening this weekend, and the showcase has been rescheduled. It was supposed to happen July 14th, but it got rained out, so happening on Saturday. That's really exciting. Talk about the importance of why young kids have been featured as a part of the festival officially, because it wasn't always the case. You know, having the kids involved in the festival is the most important part. It's a part of our legacy. Right. And I mean, I am a testament to what this carnival does for our community and for our kids. Allow me to be a leader, allow me to be a performer, but I think just giving them that opportunity to engage with our family and community in a big way like this is so special. Mm -hmm. It really is, and it's really passing on that tradition of storytelling, which is where Calypso music comes in. King Cosmos. So great to have you with us. You know, Calypso music was really big, the heyday in the 1950s and 60s, but it has such a rich tradition in Trinidad and Tobago. So talk about how you developed as a musician and how you use it to pass on that culture and tradition. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks for having me today. Uh, Calypso, well, as most people know, from Trinidad and Tobago, but here in Canada, we have a huge Calypso community. Here in Toronto, I think we have the biggest community. Mm. On July the 28th, that Sunday, we have the Calypso Monarch competition coming up. It's the biggest Calypso show in Canada. Wow. Yours truly, King Cosmos, will be part of it. <laughs> this is part of the Toronto Carnival uh, series of events, and this competition has been going on since 1981. So it's wow. quite a history to it. Wow. We're gonna have a lot of, the competition is gonna be fierce. Uh, we have nine contenders for the crown. I was one of the monarchs years ago. I'm competing this year again. Wow. So people, come on out. We're gonna be at uh, the East Town Banquet Hall, 2648 Eglinton Avenue East. It's gonna be great. You gotta come and check it out. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting and very cool. Thanks for all that you know, you're know you doing for Calypso Music as well. Uh, thank you so much, Jennifer. And people, you gotta check out Trinbago is home, again by yours truly, King Cosmos. <laughs> it's a release, it's cheering up the charts, you all gotta check it out. Can right? you give us a sample okay. of how the song, how it goes? Oh boy! How does it two go? islands, two islands, gems in the Southern Caribbean, two islands, under one flag, Trinbago, this nation we love. Woo! Okay, that's a, <laughs> okay, that is a preview. I'm and calling for you to morning. check it out. Okay. I love it. I love it. Thank you for being, you know, a good sport. And let's talk about you, uh, Hayden Joseph. You are the uh, band, the leader for the band, Lavoy Mass. So we have the Junior King and Queen Showcase, which is a huge event. But just talk about your experience as part of the Tor Toronto Caribbean Carnival and what it means to lead Lavoy Mass. Huh. Well, my tradition is from Trinidad, as mm -hmm. you know. I, I have a deep-rooted sense of carnival inside of, you know, all of us really. But I want to bring what we have from back home, which is traditional with the new and bring everything newer for what we could do here in Toronto. So my showcase is more of a Far East Asia technique, as you can see mm. from the dragon costume and whatnot. Right. Still, but I, I designed and created this one. Oh, that's beautiful. So, you know, just get things going. Yeah, all the artwork, everything is all wow. me. Wow, what's the significance of having the dragons with these very, like, feminine colors? Just because the dragon's such a powerful, mythical creature. I love the contrast. Yes, because, uh, again, yeah, yeah. You, you hit it on the head. Yeah. It's, it's strong, it's powerful, but at the same time, I want to make it a little bit more feminine mm. to bring out the woman power on the inside. Yeah, and 
women are strong and, and queens and mothers yes. of dragons. Exactly, exactly. Game of Thrones. Okay. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay, well, that is so exciting. King Cosmos, Hayden Joseph, Mishka, Cry, and Letitia, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Where can people find more information if they want to join? Not too late, right? TorontoCarnival.ca. You can join a band, go on the page, see what bands are available, yeah. go to our events pages. You'll see the event yep. that Henry talked about, plus all information on all of our tickets, but torontocarnival.ca and sign up for our newsletter so you can get information regularly. Yeah. Still going strong since 1967, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for everyone. Let's dance thank to you, the break. You. We'll be yes. right back with more CP24 Breakfast. Hey. Okay, well, with a few weeks of summer vacation under our belt, some of our kitties might be feeling a bit of the boredom blues, device breakdowns, and we have the perfect cost-friendly ideas for you. Yes. Denise Joining Wild. us live now, yeah. Hello. Denise nice Wiles. Hello. You're Hello. A ball of energy right now, <laughs> and you've you've created these all on your in, out of your brain. Yes, and these are just fun activities you can do with the kids, kids of all ages. Um, you know, inexpensive things. You probably have this already at home. Just really fun, super uh, exciting things to do. Let's start with some water gun yes. carnival games. So I'm going to okay, give you this, this one. Okay. This you is take my this favorite. one. Yeah. So let's start off with a car race, right? Oh, you wanna, okay. Yeah. So we'll get you to come around. Here. So what you're going to do, take your water guns, shoot the back of the car, uh -huh. and try to race Push it them. all the way across. Oh, 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 there we go, there we go, there we go. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, go, so this go, is fun go. to do. This is like moving in Toronto outside. traffic. It's, yeah, the indie, right. it's the Honda Indy. <laughs> yes. You can even do this outside with chalk on the sidewalk. I just used some washi wow. tape to create a little road. And then also we can knock down the pop cans. So do you guys wow. want to come okay. and do, do those do ones that. here? Oh. All right, here, sure. aim this way. No, don't go this way. Someone's desk is back there. We're going this way. We're going this way. So you go Yes, perfect. Oh, 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 oh,
Oh, that was fun. What a workout. <laughs> I should have taken off my heels to do a hoop, honestly. <laughs> Oh man, if you're looking to throw a Caribbean themed summer party and you're looking for inspiration, well today you were in luck. Joining us now for some of his favorites is celebrity chef and Caribbean cuisine expert, Noel Cunningham. Hey, Thanks for being friend. here. And Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for bringing it in. You are yes. a welcome guest when you bring these kind of flavors. I know, right? So first of all, I just want to ask you a little bit about the inspiration yeah. for your cooking. I know it came from family and yes, the flavors family. of Jamaica. Yes. And, and it got you here. Uh, and got me all the way here, right in Canada. So of course, a family of food is, we love food. Food. We're always cooking, especially on Sundays. That's how I got my start okay. from my mom and my aunt. And then I just want to explore. And then now I'm here on CP24. And you make friends with everyone, everywhere you go. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, so we're happy to have you. Tell me uh, a little bit about yeah. some of the, the, and you can find these recipes in, in your book. Yes, in my cookbook, yes. yeah, Cuisine by Noel, a Cuisine culinary journey Noel. through recipes and story. So this one is just a jackfruit pork belly okay. using some tropical flavors. And of course, it's barbecue season. Mm, and nice. I'm bringing some sunshine <laughs> after all that and rain and stuff. Yes, bringing color. some warmth and some spices. So this is a great way that you can incorporate some tropical flavors and you can wow your guests, right? They're like, yeah. you're like, really? Beautiful, tender, yeah. I'm sure. This is something really interesting because you yeah. said it, it's smoked. It's smoked oxtail. And like braised, yeah. which is And usually oxtail doesn't get a place at the table when it's barbecue time, right? But everyone goes crazy for it. Yes, them. it's yeah. brisket, it's um, beef, it's short ribs, all, but this time it's all about the smoked it's oxtail. Beautiful. So I smoke this for like three hours and then I do a, a slow, you know, I'm simmering in the oven just to get it nice and tender and it's very oh. smoky and delicious. The audience is probably wondering why I'm not already sinking my teeth yeah but we have to have a conversation I know. Have uh, this this next one jerk chicken skewers yeah. that of course you know so jerk good. chicken is a crowd favorite right yes but it's a great way that you can enjoy a jerk chicken on a stick for sure instead of a leg and tie and you're yeah, but, you know, you know, no, so you let's clean up, up yeah let's clean up fire at yeah. the end. I yeah. love that I'm gonna I have can have like multiple and no one realize oh, that's yeah. a trick oh eat it on a stick yeah because they trick. can't see they can't see no one can count how many you had I love that yeah a roasted fish and foil with kalaloo which is fun to say and okra yeah I know right so this one, I love this recipe so much because you can always prepare this ahead of time. Mm. So you season your fish, salt, pepper, your favorite fish season. Then you get some kalaloo, some okra, some onion and stuff on top of that or any veg that you like. Yeah. So it can be spinach, it can be anything that you like, peppers. You roll this in a foil okay. and you pop these in the oven or on the grill and you're good to go. For how long? For like maybe 10 minutes or okay, more. Okay, so that's yeah, pretty quick. So yeah, quick oh, cook. I like that. Yeah. I love, yeah, I love me yeah, some grilled corn. Some corn, it's, it's in season of course, it's fresh. Tasty. It's good, it's fun to eat, you know. Do you put oh, any spices or anything like I that? I do some cayenne, some salt, pepper. Mm. Usually I do some jerk mayonnaise. So I use my jerk marinade here with some get, mayonnaise. It's gonna be your van away. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I brush that now on the, on the corn. Yeah. And then some toasted coconut flakes. That's beautiful. And, yeah. and we got roasted sweet potato yes. with butter. In nice Jamaica, we love roast sweet potato. So we call it roast sweet potato. So we don't say roasted. Okay. We say roast. Roast. <laughs> roast. Roast. <laughs> roast sweet potato. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take out the ED. Next. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so, so we have some roast, um, roasted sweet potato here. And then I just do some grill mark. And you can always add you know, some butter on this, and then we cool things down with a we little cool punch. Things. I'm gonna give you that sort hey, of thanks, my friend. Yes. So this is us jump some grenadines, some Angostura no, betas. I asked if there was some rum punch in here, but yeah. you said we're keeping it. Maybe if we come back in the afternoon. Yeah, in the afternoon, <laughs> yeah, I'll for be sure. The table. <laughs> I've had rum punch in the Caribbean before. This is, this is, just, this is just very friendly. So this is okay. Where yeah. can they find more information on your on your uh, sauces, on your book? What's so definitely on my website, cuisinebynoel.com. Also on socials, I am Chef Noel on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You find me there. And you gave me permission to take more oh, of yes. these because oh, the, yes. the crew downstairs is going to go just one bill. Just, just one bill. bill. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Noel Cunningham, thank you so much for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me. Well, my spy is back for another round as CIA operative JJ, played by Dave Bautista, and protege Sophie reunites to save a touring high school choir in Italy in My Spy, The Eternal City. And our Gian Lee caught up with the star, Chloe Coleman, who plays Sophie. Have a listen. That'd be ridiculous. Congratulations again. The sequel to My Spy. This time it's The Eternal City. I have to admit, the minute the first opening scene uh, came up, the first thing that came to my mind was, oh my goodness, Chloe is all grown up. We grew a lot over the last few years. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, even looking back at the first one, and I'm realizing like, wow, I looked so young and tiny. Um, it's crazy how long it's been, five years, and I've, I've changed that much. It's really surreal.
And now ready for another adventure. Tell us a little bit more about My Spy, The Eternal City. I know most of the cast is back and it is a fantastic film. Tell me a little bit more about it. It's so, so exciting. It's a really fun ride. Everything has been up to the heart, the humor, and it's so funny and there's so much action. It's just like a great bundle of everything. And the dynamic between JJ and Sophie has really changed where Sophie now has become a teenager and she's wanting that independence and space from him and JJ has really grown into his fatherly figure and he wants to connect with her by teaching her how to be a spy and now she's kind of outgrowing that and on top of all of that they're also trying to save the world on her fire trip to Italy so it is a really exciting adventure. You talk about the action sequences you're right everything moves faster uh, the jokes the comedy it's witty and so tell me about preparing for the role because you also get a little bit more physical in this one. Yes um, so there was a lot of prep um, I think the biggest thing was definitely martial arts. I wanted to make sure I could do most of my own stunts. So I spent a year and a half training with martial arts, doing wushu with Master Li Jing, who was my wushu trainer, and she is incredible. I could have not got into the point where I was without her. And kickboxing and just doing training for like scuba diving and doing eye fly for skydiving simulations. It was all really intense, but I really loved it. And I wouldn't have been able to do most of my own stunts if I hadn't trained that hard. So I was super grateful to do all of it, it was really fun. How was it reuniting with most of the cast members? It was so fun to be back with everyone. Kristen, I got to spend even more time with her in the second film than I did in the first, and it was so, so fun. I mean, it's just a great group of people that really feel like your family, and I think that's what makes working on this film so easy, is that everyone is so comfortable and accepting, and it's just a great environment. I mean, you really, really couldn't have a better group of people. Everyone plays their characters so well, and they're all so talented. I love it. It's a really good balance between action and comedy, which isn't always easy to do. Uh, but I love the fact that the scene is set in Italy. Let's talk about that Roman backdrop. I mean, that alone <laughs> stole the show. Um, Italy is like one of my favorite places on earth. We stayed there for about a month. I wish it was longer. It was incredible. It was beautiful. It was everything. And I'm so grateful we got to film in such scenic locations like the Colosseum and we went to Venice. It was just insane to see all of it. It was so, so gorgeous. Um, it was amazing. Right. So I would since go back you love Italy so much, really quickly, a rapid fire question to end off the interview. Um, if you had to choose between this, what would you pick? A margarita pizza or a pepperoni pizza? Margarita pizza. Spaghetti or Hands fettuccine? Down. Spaghetti or fettuccine? <laughs> Spaghetti. This is a tough one. Gelato or tiramisu? Gelato or tiramisu? <sighs> what Gelato. flavor? What flavor? Ooh, I like the, I like the, I like, I do something like lemon or like mango or strawberry. Beautiful morning at Dunder Mifflin. As I like to call it, Great Bratton. Keep it running. Do I love being manager? I love my kids. I love real estate. I love ceramics. I love my job. I, I love wrestling. Find out what language this is. Nobody steals from Creed Bratton and gets away with it. The last person to do this disappeared. His name, Creed Bratton. I didn't realize that everybody here dresses up every year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one of the many classic scenes from Quality Assurance's specialist Creed Bratton and his fantastical mind and words. He's become one of the most beloved TV characters of all time on the hit show The Office. All right, so let's welcome the real-life Creed Bratton to CP24 Breakfast this morning. Creed, good to talk to you. This is such as, you know, your name, like your meta name of Creed Bratton real life, Creed Bratton character name. I, I just love how this all comes together. Nine years on The Office, what has this meant to your career? I mean, this, this show still gets watched in reruns so, so much. It's, it's, it's crazy because you can't expect, you can't plan for something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just, I pinch myself every morning and say thank you so much for my life. It's pretty mm -hmm. great. Yeah, and yes. Creed, Creed Bratton isn't even your real name, so this is, like, kind of meta. You created that oh, I, name when you, uh, when you started your band or was a guitarist with the, the Grassroots. Yes. I mean, I've, I've had several names because I've, I've been doing a lot of nefarious jobs through, through, through life and uh, just one step ahead of the law, as it were. 
Creed, let, let, let's talk about the character, Creed Braddon. Uh, the deadpan delivery you had, the sort of creepy but sort of also comforting in, in a strange way on The Office here. What's it like to play a role like that? I mean, The Office was obviously was such a quirky cast of characters, but your character in particular had this kind of cult following. As an actor, getting into that role and delivering those lines, I mean, I just want to see the outtakes. Oh, uh, well, I didn't... Uh, there's not a lot of outtakes, I don't, because I had a break. Really? No, no. I mean, w w occasionally, but not like Oscar never broke, but I, I, I rarely broke. I'm mm. impressed. You know, I'm a, I'm a pro. And, uh, <laughs> clearly, when, when Steve, clearly. When, when Steve was um, doing like uh, Prison Mike or uh, the, the big, the fat suit thing, <laughs> and he came in, which we can't, you couldn't do now on TV, of course. Right, right. Um, I, I would just go in and I just chew, chew the inside of my mouth hmm. till it would bleed, till it would bleed, <laughs> so I couldn't laugh. I just go. Oh, wow. That's some self-discipline. Um, no, okay. Well, I had to. I had to. Yeah. yeah. I had to. And yes. a, a lot of the things that you did, the writers were so great in giving you the creative freedom to just improv your lines uh, and, you know, go with the flow, following your creative input. Um, so is there a favorite Creed moment from the show that still makes you laugh today when you think about it? <laughs> well, that's one right there. <laughs> <laughs> Listing all the painkillers. Oh, uh, gosh. I think... Um, I love the scene with Krasinski and I uh, from um, Survivor Man mm. when, um, when Steve is going off into the woods with Dwight mm -hmm. and then we're talking, there's a pie, and I want a pie, I want a nice cobbler. You talk to Angela. <laughs> well, John's idea was to do that like a David Mamet play. And he said, what if we do it like this? And uh, I, I see the harbingers of uh, greatness hit at that time for John. And, uh, and we were laughing pretty hard. It's was, it was pretty good stuff, you know. <laughs> and, I, I mean, I went to work. I went to work every day to work with my friends, you know. Aww. And uh, I mean, I do still feel bad about um, mm -hmm. um, Debbie Brown because what I did to her, um, <laughs> you know, I just I still to this day it bothers me, you know. Aww. If I had if I had uh, the, uh, Skittles. If I had some Skittles, <laughs> yeah. um, I could have just talked when they asked me, what, what's going on? Where's the money? Why didn't you go to work? There. I would have just taken some Skittles and go, mofo. Could have been mofo. it. Exactly. I could have exactly. right just, I could have <laughs> just, uh, I could have avoided all that stuff. I would have used it all the time. It just, and they would just had to, you know, get, uh, get paid from Skittles, I guess, if, I, if I'd have known about it, because it's a wonderful thing. I guess so. And so, so Creed, let's talk about this. Currently, th there's a new show or some sort of spinoff of The Office coming out. But at this point, you're kind of not involved right now. Rain Wilson, of course, is trying to, you know, get a campaign to get you back on the show. Yeah. You, I yeah. assume you'd want to be a part of this. Well, of course I, yeah. I would. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, um, Rain had an idea to um, just have me there with no explanation. <laughs> <laughs> no name. No name. Once in a while, I would just come up with a non sequitur, blurt it out. And uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that would be fun. That would be yeah. fun. But no, but there, right now, there's no. I'm just uh, working with uh, the Skittles people, you know, trying to help people get through this summer. Yeah. You know, that's, uh, that's what we're doing right now. And touring with my music. Yes, you've got a debut album coming out, and let's talk about your music because, you know, you've been playing guitar and doing music for just as long as you've been doing acting, really. Yes, and you yes. say that your travels around Europe and Africa have really shaped your artistic and musical career. So what can we expect from this album of yours? The album is called um, Dao Pop, and actually, it's funny, today, the second single, I'm mm. Always Dreaming of You, is being released. Which it's very serendipitous, my my, my folks here. <laughs> uh, that, uh, that 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 song would be coming out there. I'm always dreaming of you. It's a pretty good song. There's some old fashioned songs. There's some poppy songs. Um, but on September 27th, Dao Pop T A O P O P Dao, the middle way, right. comes out. And uh, uh, it's got, I, I don't know if you've got a, a, co a picture of the cover. Don't know no, if we do no, or not, no, to be no. honest with you, Creed. I wish we well, did. Let's I'm get you up here and perform it one yeah, Okay, show it to show us. It yeah, to yeah, us just flash phone. the cover. You're prepared. I'm going to show I'm, I'm going to yeah. show I am. I am prepared. So, uh, you know, I'd love to see, see a spin off show of Creed Bratton as, you know, on his music career. That would be kind yeah, of that'd real be a life, great real life. Yeah. Well, cool. people ask all this stuff, mm -hmm. and I'm just so lazy, guys. As are we. No. No, I'm not. I'm not. Where is that? Where is this picture? If we don't find it real quick. Uh, morning at 
Dunderman. Wait, it's getting close. I'm getting close. Okay, so great. We go. We're going to do a yeah. quick giveaway here because I know you were talking about Skittles here. So we're going to do a bit of a giveaway. Then we'll come back. So find that picture. We'll do the giveaway and then come back to you, Creed. Mm -hmm. There it is. Well, look, Creed Breton is not leaving us empty-handed. He's brought with him a nifty prize for you, our viewers. We're giving away a year's supply of Skittles. Imagine, a whole year of tasting the rainbow. I can, because they're delicious. You, too, can master the muffle technique, if you haven't already, to dodge any unwanted conversation that comes your way. All you have to do is send us your name, your phone number, and email to contest at cb24.com, along with the answer to this question, where can you catch all seasons of The Office? Good luck. Okay, Creed, have you found that picture now? I got the album cover? I have, and... Uh... Other way. Oh, Other that's way. scary. <laughs> Imagine if it was something inappropriate. <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry. Creed Bratton would never do something that inappropriate. Was, that was a fish. Oh, that was a fish. Wow. Other, other way, oh, other oh, side. Oh, yeah, there, there, there. Hold it still. Wow. There it is. Tao Pop. Tao Pop. All right. Is that like Taoist, like Buddhism? Dao. Yeah, Dao. exactly. Yeah, the, the, Tao Pop. Dao, Dao Pop. Yeah, okay, yeah. very cool. Yeah. Can't wait to but, check it uh, out. Um, yeah, this get to play music and... Uh, Get a lot. Can I win? Can I enter that contest myself? <laughs> you want the Skittles? Skittles? Sure. I mean, yeah. I'm hoping the Skittles folks are going to give you some of yourself, Creed. But listen, Creed Bratton, it's been a real pleasure talking to you. Hope to see you on whatever reboot of The Office there is. Mm -hmm. Good luck with Skittles. Good luck with the music. And uh, next time you're in Toronto, stop by. Yes. We love thank you. Thank you both for having me. I appreciate thank it. Thank you so much, Creed. Take care. A lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Bye.